So what the U.S. Radium Corporation did was they hired women, sometimes as young as 11 years old, to work with this radium-infused paint. So they would paint the dials, for instance, with this radium-infused paint. Now, here's the problem. The paint was, the painting was very precise. So very little dials, right? So it required the women to lick the paintbrush in between paint strokes in order to create a really fine tip on the paintbrush. Now, here's what we now would look back and think, what were you guys thinking? Were you crazy? Because licking the paint was actually considered a perk of the job at the time. So they're literally, picture that, they're literally all these women, young children, licking radium infused paint off paint brushes all day long as they worked, all right? So why was it considered a perk? Medical doctors were promoting radium therapy at the time. Hi everybody, welcome to another Beyond Labels podcast with yours truly, Farmer Joel Salatin and our favorite researcher, Dr. Sina McCullough. Several weeks ago, we hosted here at Polyface our annual wellness summit uh, we're going to change the name in the future to the Beyond Label Summit to keep it all kind of consistent with the book, this podcast, and that and that summit. It's definitely grown in um, in strength and popularity, and we thank those of you who came to it for coming. And we hope to see a lot of you others next year when we have our. I think it'll be our our fifth or something. It's uh, it's hard to believe that it would be that many. Anyway, um, in that that theme for this year, the kind of theme was kind of where science got it wrong and what we can do to correct it. And, uh, and, and we looked at a lot of things and Cena gave kind of the, you know, the keynote presentation going down through uh, the history of numerous things and showing how um, science got it wrong from what's, from what's true. And um, like so many times, you know, you get to talking and then you suddenly realize, Ooh, the clock is ticking and I don't have time and, and people don't have bladders enough to handle as long as I can talk. And so, so uh, she had, she had to cut a couple of these out. And one that she cut out that she really wants to share today is about the radium girls going back to 1920s, the radium girls. And so um, bring us up, bring us up some history here, Cena. Thanks, Joel. Yes. Radium girls is something that I found out about just within the last year and I was watching a documentary with my husband, with Donnie, and it was about radium girls. And we looked at each other and we we're like, oh my goodness, how did we not know about this? Like, this is a prime example of what you and I talk about with um, corruption, with government and industry being involved and the public being kept in the dark. And it ends up in a huge health issue, <laughs> health issues for people. So this is a fascinating story. So. Hold on as we um, if we just go through the highlights of this of this um, very interesting historical perspective of another example of how science got it wrong and how we were duped. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so so the radium girl. So radium, as you probably know, is a radioactive element. It was discovered in 1898 by Marie and Pierre Curie. And the scientific and medical community fell hard for it. It was so unique because it constantly gave off energy without losing any weight. And that did not conform to the known laws of physics at the time. So it was actually dubbed by the Chicago Daily Tribune at the time to have, quote, new and useful powers, right? So the scientific community fell hard for it. And the media picked it up as this um, element with new and power, new and useful powers. Okay, this sounds familiar already, right? Scientific community and media working hand in hand. <laughs> yeah, and 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 new new and useful powers, uh, new and useful powers without any um, um, uh, w without any expected consequences, you know. Um, yeah, uh, unintended consequences. Uh, yeah, un unintended consequences. Yeah. Yeah, it's this new thing that, and and it and it doesn't obey the laws of physics. So let's all start consuming it. You know, I mean, that's pretty much what happened, right? So so let me get you to, up to speed. So 
1914, the United States began producing radium infused paint. Okay, the U.S. Radium Corporation actually received uh, money, these, these are through military contracts, to paint things like watches, control panels, and other instruments with radium because it would glow in the dark, right? So this could be really useful, like a wristwatch. Um, say you're in the trenches in, uh, during war and you need to time an attack, right? It's dark in the trenches. You can look at the dial and it's, it's glowing. Um, the same thing with like on, you know, planes and stuff like that. You can see the dials oh. glow. So useful concept. So what the U.S. Radium Corporation did was they hired women, sometimes as young as 11 years old, to work with this radium infused paint. So they would paint the dials, for instance, with this radium infused paint. Now, here's the problem. The paint was the painting was very precise. So very little dials, right? So it required the women to lick the paintbrush in between paint strokes in order to create a really fine tip on the paintbrush. Now here's what we now would look back and think, what were you guys thinking? Were you crazy? Because licking the paint was actually considered a perk of the job at the time. So they're literally, picture that, they're literally all these women, young children, licking radium infused paint off paint brushes all day long as they worked, all right? So why was it considered a perk? Medical doctors were promoting radium therapy at the time. Radium was considered a cure-all, a quote, elixir of youth. They thought it would eradicate all diseases known to man. And the reason is because the scientists showed that it could actually kill cancer cells, right? Because it's radiation. So they thought that it would, if it could cure cancer, then surely it was going to heal lesser diseases like heart disease or diabetes. So what happened? Radium was actually added to water and it was marketed in around 1904 as quote, liquid sunshine. Radium spas popped up where you could literally go pay to take baths in the radium, right? There was radium tea times. It was advertised as, quote, the most curative mineral water in California. Radium was added to chocolate, to snacks, to makeup, to skincare products, toothpaste. There were even radium suppositories. And the girls who worked at those radium um, paint infused uh, plants, before they went out, like had a night on the town dancing, right? These are young girls. They would paint their teeth with radium because they would glow in the dark at these, you know, when they're out dancing. There was even a radium medical doctor who deemed himself a radium expert. And he declared in a lecture in 1931 that these radium infused beverage, beverages were the quote, cornerstone of his health regimen. He said he regularly drank a radium highball to maintain optimal health. Now, the girls and the women who worked at the radium infused paint facilities, they were assured that it was safe by the company. They were assured that by the medical doctors and the media that it was safe. All right, and don't forget the project itself was funded by money from the government. Meanwhile, at the same time, when they're being told it's safe and the public's being told it's safe, scientists who were handling radium followed protective, protective uh, safety precautions, you know, wore protective gear, okay? But nobody else was warned. Then in the 1920s, the women who were working at these radium-based paint, uh, paint companies they began to have serious health issues. Teeth began falling out. They had severe weakness. They had pains in their jaws. Some of them developed holes in their jaws. One of the women, her jaw actually fell off. There were um, bones in uh, the spine that were crumbling in some of them, and they had tumors. These were women in their early 20s. A lot, some of them had ch young children, they were married, and they were dying 
and their deaths were actually covered up. They were disguised as syphilis in some cases. So the, the companies, the company who they worked for, they said, oh, this is just syphilis. And some reports are saying that they think that the re one of the reasons why the company did that was because it, nobody wants to admit they have syphilis, right? No one wants to talk about that. So it was kind of a way to shut them up, like to get them to stop talking about all their different symptoms that they're having. Okay, so <clears throat> this went on for a while. Um, they tried to get the labor department involved. It was alleged that um, the employers of the United States Radium Corporation, they apparently refused to accept any responsibility for the illnesses, even though the women's doctors and dentists were saying, no, this is probably from the radium. Um, again, they said, no, this is from a sexually transmitted disease. They tried to discredit the women, silence them. Um, and actually, allegedly, in March of 1924, that company did conduct a covert internal investigation led by a Harvard physician. The investigation concluded that um, the radium was likely causing the illnesses, and that physician recommended safety precautions. Okay, that was in 1924. Well, the president of the company rejected the findings. The report was allegedly buried. And instead, the company submitted a fraudulent report to the Labor Department with false results that would basically exonerate them as not being responsible for the women's illness. And um, one reason why they thought this also remained hush-hush was because it's alleged that many of the leading radium scientists actually had investments in the radium companies. So they were not inclined to disclose these dangerous side effects, even though the scientists knew since 1914 that radium could cause anemia and skin burns and such. Um, later on, during litigation, it was revealed that these scientists and the management had taken precautions to protect themselves from the effects of the radiation, um, and that some of these um, some of these findings were actually buried. Okay, so what happened was several of the women who got sick, they sued companies in two states. The states were in Illinois and in New Jersey. The girls who sued in Illinois became known as the Radium Girls or Ottawa's Living Dead, right? That's what they were nicknamed by the media and the public. Now, allegedly, the company, again, was not... Um, so we say very ethical, they tried to delay the trial and hope that the women would die before the trial would begin. They were successful. The lawsuit in New Jersey was filed by five women in 1925, and the hearing didn't take place until 1928. Uh, they, the women eventually won a settlement. It was only $10,000 plus the payment of their doctor's bills. Now, the uh, and many of them died, right? Many of the women just died before bef before any of um, any of these uh, lawsuits came about. So they didn't even get justice. Now, this tells you how um, how do, um, poisoned their bodies were with this radium. The bodies of the workers, when they were buried, they had to be buried in lead-lined coffins because the radioactivity in their bones was so high, right? Now, when they were alive, you could measure the radioactivity from their breath. So every time they breathed, it came out of their bodies. It's estimated now that that radium was responsible for killing 112 of these dial painters. Um, and they're saying that for many of them, they're in the coffins now, even though this happened in 1920s, they're still in the coffins and they think their bones are still radiating this glowing substance, right? Now, here's another thing that sounds very similar to today. This lawsuit and the settlement, it didn't actually stop radium from being funded by the government and promoted by the media and the medical doctors, right? Some people actually um, pounced on the women, right? Saying that they were like making it up. 
right? I mean, it sounds very familiar. Some reports allege that what really turned the tide and woke people up again about radium and got them to stop, you know, putting it in chocolates and everything, it wasn't until the death of a wealthy steel mogul named um, Evan Byers. He was actually an industrialist who was advised by his medical doctor to drink a radium beverage every day because he had a nagging arm industry. After two years of doing this, at the age of 51, he um, he developed necrosis in both jaws, anemia, and a brain abscess. Those are all symptoms of radium poisoning. And he did die in March of 1931. When that happened, the government the government response was actually swift. <laughs> the Federal Trade Commission ramped up the inquiry into radium. Health officials vowed they were going to crack down on the sellers of radium preparation. And what was once heralded as, as this elixir of youth actually became known as bottled death. All right. So on an interesting side note, in Ottawa, there were 16 different sites where the women would paint the instruments using this radium infused paint. When that company closed, get this. So th this is also how it relates to um, Joel, you and I talking about the food supply. Okay. Okay. Little did you know, talking about radium girls, I was going to bring in the food supply somehow, right? <laughs> so, so when two of the buildings were closed, one, uh, or, sorry, when the buildings were closed, two of the buildings were used to store meat. <laughs> Can you imagine? They, they stored it in these buildings that had radium poisoning yeah. all over. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And now, so two were used to store meat. One would later become a farmer's co op. It became a co op where you'd go and buy your fresh food from the farmer. Right. Then eventually it was classified by the government as a super fund site, which means it requires long term hazardous waste removal. So, I mean, Joel, are you familiar with these super fund sites? Oh, yeah. Yeah. They've been around for a long, long time. Yeah, I mean, yes. the, 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 probably the most famous one was the dioxin, uh, the dioxin sites up in uh, New York, up upstate New York. Yeah. Yes. So isn't that nice to know? It brings me great comfort to know that a super fun site had been carrying food for, <laughs> for us to eat. Like, I'm sure, though, I'm sure it didn't get contaminated at all. You know, no, all, these all, people all know the what they're doing. Yeah, all the radiation was gone by that time. Oh, I'm there, sure. There, there was probably enough radiation in that building to turn a Geiger counter upside down. Yes, yes. Well, and then, so if anyone's interested, these super fun sites, um, if you go on to the EPA's website, you can actually search to see if there's a super fun site where you live, right? So they, they have them by state and by county. And they tell you where it is. You can, I type mine in just to make sure I don't have any right near me, but there are some in Georgia. Um, according to the EPA, there are, quote, thousands of contaminated sites that exist, exist nationally due to hazardous waste being dumped, left out in the open, or otherwise improperly managed. These sites include manufacturing facilities, processing plants, landfills, and mining sites. So we do have thousands of them still in existence today. But mm -hmm. what a crazy story, right, about these radium girls, like, and so many similarities to what we still have today where, oh, it's this newfound treatment for disease, for instance, and we're not going to test this at all. We don't need any long-term testing, but, you know, there, just go ahead and take it and take it in excess, right? Take a bunch of it. Yeah, and, take, um, yeah, take, take, take. Yeah, <laughs> take all this, um, you know, and, and it's going to cure all, like, you don't need to worry about changing your diet or your lifestyle whatsoever. This is going to fix everything for you. And then the companies take no responsibility, right? Just like we see here, there's cover up, there's manipulation, there's government funding involved. I mean, some things never change, Joel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's exactly what was going through my mind as you were telling the story. Uh, you know, the, the, the thing about history is that um, the thing about history is we don't learn from history. And and uh, and people are the same uh, in every culture. You know, there's 
there's the greed, the selfishness, there's the, there's the, the go-getters and there's the, the ones that uh, don't want to do anything, let the lazies. I mean, we're, we're um, for all of our language differences and our, you know, geopolitical differences, the human spirit, the human, you know, um, uh, mentality is, um, is, is very, very similar uh, from, you know, from place to place. And uh, yeah, this is, this is just, it's just an amazing story of how, how um, when you have the collusion of government, science, and media, it's like everybody's, um, everybody's um, awareness signals you know, red flags, um, you know, just, just, they're not there, you know, they're not there. And, um, and yeah, and we see that, we see that today in so many things. And uh, this is just, uh, it's just a great, um, a great story. And, and, you know, and what, what's so, what's so, um, especially, you know, frustrating is, is, it is the, the stonewalling that the company did. I mean, it's the same thing the tobacco companies did. It's the same thing now that uh, Pfizer and Merck are doing over the the uh, the 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 um, the results of their. Uh, it's it, it, it's it's this it's a, as my dad used to say. It's the same boat crossing the same river. It's the same thing. Thank you for joining us on Beyond Labels. Our mission with this podcast is to make it accessible to everyone. But we are behind a paywall because the issues we discuss are often subject to censorship. We've run into that, and so we have an extremely modest paywall to let us have the freedom to discuss the kind of issues we want to discuss in the way we want to discuss them. And you can become a member and enjoy all this content by clicking on the description box below. We look forward to having you join our family.